so it's going to be a little delayed and on our screen, but it should just um, should come up. Cool. Problem. What's up, Facebook? <laughs> yeah. Hello. Okay, manage. Okay, was it say something about meeting is now live streaming to Facebook. So let's see if it's live streaming. And are we on live streaming? Can you see? Um, <laughs> did I bring up my laptop? Yeah, yeah, let's check it out because I can't okay. see. <sighs> okay, let me see. Am I live streaming? I want to see it. I want to check that we're on here, guys, with you, with you guys. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Are we live streaming on Facebook? We should be live streaming. Um, hold on. I'm going to check your page real quick. It should be on my page. Oh, yep. Yep. Can you oh. see us? Yeah, we can see it. It is all good to go. We're all good. There you are. Sick. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Because I can't, can't see it on my page, so that's all right. I just wanted to. So, hi guys. As you can see, we're we're playing around with Josh's hands. So we're playing around with getting on this live buzz, and um, we're doing it a little bit different because obviously we're not together. So. Josh is in Wellington and I'm in Tauranga. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> yeah. So, um, and, and so we're actually um, using Zoom, a uh, Zoom Live, which is, oh, got a different light here. God, that's right. Um, <laughs> so we're just play, we've been playing around with it, trying to get it to work properly. So um, it is our very first time doing it like this. Hey, um, so I want to. Um, and because I, I can't actually see who's on either now, so I can't. Oh, true, yeah. Either. So um, it just kind of kind of feels a bit weird. Oh, now I can see you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna like my own page. <laughs> you can like it too, all right? So um, yeah, so I just want to say welcome to you guys. So some of you are gonna be joining us from all over the world. Yeah, some of you guys are going to be joining from the UK, some of you are going to be joining from, hopefully from Turkey, um, got some people joining from New Zealand. And so some of you will be watching now, some of you will be watching later. But I think um, tonight's going to be fun. I'm really excited because um, I haven't seen Josh for ages really. And we do always do good lives. So we've got good content to bring, right? Hell yeah, you best believe. Yeah. So, and it's also part of what we've like, like a little program we've got coming up. Probably we haven't got an actual date yet for its release. No. Uh, technical issues, but that's okay. Um, we're getting there. We're chugging along. We're going to get there. Yeah. And it's really, really cool. So um, together we've uh, created a package and program called You Thrive. And what that does is it's going to give um, people really cool um, fitness and nutrition and all that stuff, right? And so it's a, it's a, yeah, it's it's a, a yeah, it's an it's an opportunity to like learn a little bit more about um, what this vessel of yours kind of does and and how it works and um, and ways to take advantage of that and um, how to improve um, like with regards to learning about exercise and nutrition. Uh, B's handling the nutrition sides of things. I'm handling the exercise side of things. Um, so yeah, we're 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 getting all our ducks in a row. But uh, there's just a couple of ducks that are going on vacation at the moment. So <laughs> we need to, um, <laughs> yeah, right. so, but it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. And so it's going to be really cool. So it's a monthly subscription. You're going to get like one on ones with all of, with both of us. It's going to be really, really cool. And um, but so that's going to be coming out soon enough. So over the next, you know, we're going to be doing lives together. So you guys get to know us and you can a see some of the stuff that you're going to a, get from us as well on our on the programs but um just so you can see where our passions are because the um the programs are not just about fitness nutrition it's going to be also about you know like hey like i love the way you know the vessel because that's what this is right this is our vessel right for, for yeah. breathing for life force and i guess it's a little bit about what we're going to talk about tonight yeah 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 <laughs> 
You got someone so, in the background as well. <laughs> yeah, my mom just came in. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. So tonight we really wanted to talk a little bit about um, again, like because there's been so much going on in the world around you know, COVID nineteen and how people are really starting to be affected by that. And actually, you know what, I was talking to my business mentor today and she was saying that um, you're really going to start seeing the effects of that really between kind of June and um, September or June and August where people are going back to work. And so I think tonight is um, a really effective time to start talking about how to deal with some of that stress, stresses and anxiety and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that there, I mean, my sister got offered to to go back to work from from her company but um i think that it's more of just like if you feel safe if you feel comfortable going back to work if you feel like it'll be a better working environment then you're more than welcome and then there's just going to be you know regulations and precautions that they'll have to take so then it doesn't spread or that you know they know that it's not within the the company or the workspace um but i, I think people are going to start to kind of go back to normal so to speak um yeah maybe I, I'm not, I don't I didn't hear anything about like two months or anything, but when it does go down to level two, um, I'm not sure what you've heard um, with regards to level two at the moment. I know that they're speaking about level three going um, on Monday next week, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, the thing is that for, for what I think we, we can tend to do eh, is look so far in advance and really kind of miss what's going on in the moment right now with it as well, because, you know, we've had three, you know, nearly four weeks and of, like being in containers together and the effect of that on ourselves and on our families and, you know, on our, and, and everyone's like, oh, I'm going to go back to normal. Well, what is normal going to actually be like? It's not mm. going to be what we used to have. Yeah, you won't be able to fall back into those groups. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not, is it going to be good? It's not going to be bad. It's going to be what we can perceive, what we, we make of it and our mm. perceptions around that. And, um, and I think that like for us as individuals, as human beings, now starting to create that new um, way of thinking, those new perceptions is going to be really, really important. And mm -hmm. obviously dealing with our own health and our own stress and well-being is going to be a huge, a huge part of that. Yeah. yeah, I think this like this pandemic is a I mean, aside from all the, the terrible things, um, you know, it, it's like on the plus side. I mean, I, I think I'm a little bit optimistic maybe, but um, but I think it's a really good opportunity for, for people to recognize maybe maybe they didn't actually want to be in those grooves in the first place. Maybe their normal before this all happened wasn't actually what the normal that they wanted. Um, yeah. So it, it's an opportunity to recognize that and, and mm -hmm. make some steps forward and to get to a different place and, you know, yeah. um, create a different norm. And it's so true though, because like, you know, I've been I've been thinking about this myself, and maybe some of you guys who are joining us tonight, and maybe Josh, I don't know you experienced this. We haven't talked about this, but <laughs> exactly. But like for me, like I I um I'm a usually pretty. I'd like to say easygoing. I mean, I'm pretty easygoing. But You're easygoing. I'm also, yeah, I'm pretty easygoing. Yeah. Yeah, you can give yourself. Also, that. like you're all like you know, like full on, you know. So yeah, um, guns uh, blazing, twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah. I like it though. Yeah, I love the I, energy. I like it too. But you know, when you like that though, what can happen is it's really easy to, you know, be just dis distracted by other parts of your life, right? And so when you're when your vessel's in a container, <laughs> right? So like when you are they're like therefore forced into being in a situation or in a, like that you're you're not used to and you have to you have to really slow down and you hear a lot of people talking about that um you know you've got to be now it's time for self-reflection and stuff and that's incredibly stressful that's it can yeah it can be very uh confronting to say the yeah. least yeah especially if you've been forced into that situation like we all have pretty much around the world i mean like <clears throat> you know like single people like you know people who are single and they're like they're, they're in their house by themselves or they've had to go back to their families or you know mm. like what can i i mean are you, you that's you right you're like when this happened you yeah. 
I was lucky, man. I got I got out of Toad on a not saying that Toad on is bad, but <laughs> Toad on is beautiful. The way that I said it sounded terrible, but like the second, the last day um, that I was at work was the Tuesday, and that was when level three came, and that was at three p.m. Oh. And um and my car, I've got like this MX five. I'm not sure if you guys know too much about cars, but it's like this little like old school kind of British looking um uh, convertible. And it's like a two seater. And how, and how tall are you? Six three or something? Uh, six two. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look natural, me being. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, you can't like it's got a lunchbox for a boot. Like there's no chance that you're going to fit anything in there, let alone your whole house pretty much. So, but I have another car. So my other car has been in the workshop and that literally just got fixed by the mechanics on the Wednesday, which was the next day. And then I think that they said that like everything's closed, like you can't get out of your region by 12 PM that night. So like I was just able to like sneak out of Tolong um, on Wednesday, but otherwise I would have been home alone. Like, yeah this whole time i would still be up in Tauranga in my house chilling out i wouldn't be with my family or anything so i'm super grateful for that but yeah man it's it, that would have been because for me I, i'm quite even though i'm quite introverted i'm quite social as well I like you know getting into deep conversations that's just like something that I, I i need and if i was to be by myself man that would be yeah. that would be something else mm. and, so, and, that, and so that's it you know like there are people in such different situations a by themselves and then confronted by whatever's going on for them in their life like loneliness you know separation but then there's also people who are linked together and then they're also confronted with all of that togetherness and that can also mm. they're, they're not it's not like one's better than the other or more negative and and, mm. I, and, I, and and they can bring up such a level of um anxiety and pressure and stress and frustration and if you're going through that process of kind of rediscovering or relearning about yourself or where you want to be, like it can be incredibly um, like frightening, I think, mm. for a lot of people. I just need yeah. to mention here. Uh, my two favorite people. Oh, <laughs> it's more of a statement than a question, but not to you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, and so that's what it, some of the things we're going to talk about tonight is really um kind of I, I one of the things that i get really excited about this by the way guys so if i get like you know i've always got my notebook to keep me on track <laughs> what but don't you get excited about that's a good point i don't know <laughs> uh well i mean i'm not cleaning up your dog shit hey eh? cleaning up dog shit oh, that i mean unless you're into that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> honestly your dog is so cute oh my god oh my god my sister just got a puppy it's 12 weeks old Aww. honestly i just want to squeeze it so bad but anyway sorry <laughs> Watch it around your dog. yeah so so well, Wait, that's a big that, side note but carry on okay <laughs> so some of the things that josh is going to do he's going to talk about um breathing meditation kind of like how to like you know a little bit more about how to do that stuff eh? because that's kind of your like you're quite good with that stuff yeah i mean like <laughs> i i do uh, okay. meditation yeah, I, I practice it. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm definitely not uh, like an expert, uh, an expert like at all on it. But um, I, I find that like for me, um, I I have a, a lot of anxiety when it comes to like social gatherings. It's, I mean, that's the main reason why I went into PTing to try to kind of learn that skill set. Um, but I found that like meditation for me has always been like something that I've, I've always kind of gone back to. And that's, that's really helped with, with, mm. you know, those so, kinds of struggles. Yeah. So whether you're in the social setting and that's anxiety provoking or whether being in an environment where we um, I have been confronted and, you know, compressed I've, like in a very short space of time, which can bring up all sorts of anxieties for people as well as the anxiety of like going out like um, a friend of mine today she's like i'm actually really scared of going out like to the su supermarket you know oh no way like, yeah. yeah people are not social distancing <laughs> like yeah well it's hard to social distance when you're walking past the meat section you know like and so so there is an actual real fear and anxiety around stuff that we can't see and mm. so i'm going to talk a little bit about that i'm going to talk a little bit about how to sort of train our brain and what happens just a little bit about what happens when we're under stress in our, in our brain cortex. 
Mm -hmm. um, and a little bit about how to, you know, use, when I still talk about training our brain, go, like using the four primary neurotransmitters to, mm -hmm. to kind of develop some. Um, what are the four brain. primary neurotransmitters? The four primary are uh, dopamine, endorphin, oxytocin, and serotonin. Cool, cool. They're yeah. the four most studied ones. Yeah, I'm familiar a little bit with with dopamine and serotonin. Yeah. Um, run me through. Um, so, uh, what was the other one? Which one? Like, get to that section, Flo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so we're kind of we don't like a lot of time, guys. We don't do a lot of um, prep for this. Like we we do obviously, but you know we we he's down there, I'm up here. We just kind of roll with it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So. Um, First of all, I guess we would start off with the fact that um, when we are under a lot of pressure, and that was there was another whole point about that too, actually. Um, the um, yeah, like because because what we did this was like during this time we're going to be developing quite a lot of skills to help us actually um, utilize after the lockdown. Because as I was saying, like right now we're kind of in this new this new space, right? where we don't really know what's going on. People want to get back to normal, but they don't really know what that normal is going to look like. So after this four weeks, after our we're level three, we're starting to move back into level two, that's where a lot of stresses are going to come up from. You know, like people kind of not really knowing where they are or, you know, how to, how to move through things. So hopefully what we're going to do tonight as well, give you this, some of those skills. So if you are... Um, maybe hands up and give me a high five or some love if you do have been you know struggling at the moment has anyone you know been struggling because I mean, I hand up, hand up. amen yes <laughs> yeah i'm actually really grateful i've got my tattoo though i i look at that every day and it just reminds me of like all my like the things that drive me my purpose and my passion and it doesn't make things easier but it's a constant reminder mm. you know so, yeah, so um, when we do get really stressed out, some things happen in our body. And I think this might be a really good place to start with. And then I'm going to hand it over to Josh to maybe give us some ideas on some breathing techniques that can be really supportive in helping us, um, you know, open up our, you know, our body to start to de-stress. So when we have a perceived danger, and a lot of um, us might already know this, but... Um, we go back to the animal times, right? You know, like let's say I'm a zebra and I'm like, you know, woo, frolicking around, right? And there is a lion, <laughs> right? And I'm like, crikey, that lion's going to eat me. So what happens is that then I go into high stress mode, right? So my um, my adrenals, my cortisol, my cortex is fired up. So my fight and flight, you know, happens and kicks in. Obviously cortisol, you know, uh, levels um, increase and the adrenals um, kick in. So, well, then what happens is then I get all these new, these hormones that are really about protecting the body and, and immunity and stress and, and trying to reduce that. Then then I get a high like blood pre like high pulse, my blood pressure increases and stuff. And so they're very normal um, responses to stress. Um, a lot of the times today, people actually try to avoid that by using drugs and alcohol. You know, drugs, alcohol, sex, like addiction is a really big part of why we why we use addiction actually is to try and reduce stresses um but so what happens is when we get into this kind of like fight and like stress syndrome our bodies um like a zebra for example doesn't keep worrying about the lion so after the stress after the the initial um threats left then he just goes back to eating right he just goes back to being himself but human beings don't actually do that right so the more intensive the stress what happens is then our body actually has a body memory, okay? And we we actually then like create new pathways in our brain and our memory to m memorize that stress. Now, for example, this whole co the COVID-19 is, is an invisible stress. Like we can't see where it is. We can't see the threat. We don't know what's going on. And so what can happen is our body, then we've got this internalized stress that's in our brain. Okay, and then that affects our, our actual cells of our body. So anyone... I think, I mean, sorry, to, to just chime in real quick. Um, no, that's no. a real key word that you used there. Um, you said like internal stress, um, meaning that it's, it's actually inside of you that's making you feel that way. It's not uh, 
external the the things that happen on that happen um in the world and that happen in your life and your relationships and by yourself um it all comes down to like how you are perceiving the world um and and what uh what's your internal dialogue like um how well do you manage that those kinds of stresses because that, that's a, a really important um important thing to to know and you'll learn that as well when if, if any of you guys have never done meditation before um that is pretty much like like meditation 101 is um recognizing the um the external internal kind of relationship and also having respect to both of those but also recognizing what is and what isn't it's not that COVID-19 is a stressful thing it's COVID-19 is a virus but we perceive it as a stressful thing because of those points that you were making before I love that so meditation one-on-one say it again is the ability or is the well I mean yeah you you learn a, a bunch of things in, in meditation and, and I think one of them one of the key things that I've found is and this is this is why I mean I think that it's so key to be optimistic because it really helps reinforce um, those meditation techniques and looking at everything outside of you that's not in your control um, as just something that's not in your control so you know you can't you can't control those things it's it's impossible so you have to almost accept them for what they are that's beautiful yeah because it's like it's like the the reality like this is the, okay so i haven't got a picture here but like you know that this is uh the external world right these are the things we can't control and then this is what we can control with the overlap right mm. and as you say COVID 19 is of just it, it is a virus that's what it is that's yeah um yeah, but it is how, what it is. how we think about it is actually how we're going to respond to it that stressor mm, so mm. yeah i really like that because that's what it is eh? it's that perception it's the internal dialogue we're, we're having with ourselves about the situation that we're in whether it's the relationship whether it's the the um the fact that we might have lost our job or mm. we're not sure you know what's going to happen yeah um, and and this is not me justifying like like you you should feel like however you feel like like you should uh, um you should be aware of that like some for me i mean i'm at home with my family uh, i like just clutched it and i moved out of <clears throat> excuse me told i came down to wellington and i'm still working out my mum cooks me amazing dinners like i've got it good man like so i mean i'm sure that there's so many other people out there that are not in my shoes and like it is important to for me as well to to kind of express to you guys that like the things that you are feeling they are true like it's not like that they're, they're just all made up in your own mind because they will drive you crazy it's but it, it's hard it's a difficult challenge to to kind of overcome and okay. and be aware of um but it is something that you'll 100 percent uh you'll you'll learn and you'll understand but you'll you'll 100 have like a lot of uh self-gratification and, and self-confidence as well which is super important especially when it comes to dealing with anxiety and dealing with these stresses as we come out of this and learning these new skills and that and, and yeah. that's it like it's just starting to recognize as you said that internal dialogue that actually um is creating the stress you know that the the around what it's happening because you know, like as I said, like zebras, once the stress is over, they don't worry about it. But what we typically do is we go into sort of a worry mode. And what that yeah. does is that then reinforces the fear or the stress memory. And that then um, actually breaks down our cells as well. It increases stress hormones in our cells, which makes us quicker. But what it then does do is it leads to um, ongoing anxiety in general um, and stresses in general. So it can, if if chronic and un left unchecked, like what you're saying, like we're talking about, you know, starting to implement maybe some of the, the meditation ideas that you've been talking about, um, that that we'll, get, we'll talk about in a minute, but with, with left unchecked is that it could actually lead to like a generalized anxiety disorder or something like that, which is um, actually mm -hmm. a real problem. Because if you do start responding to the world in that manner, um, things are certainly not going to improve in life. Um, and so when we are in a, like at a heightened stress or constant worry mode, 
and our, we, we react from our memory rather than from what's actually happening. Yeah. So, yeah. So if anyone here has ever been through trauma, like, I mean, I have, and I'd say the majority of people probably watching or, you know, joining us will have been through some type of trauma, generally relational, but in this circumstance, you know, like, you know, and then you go back into relationship, you can get triggered very quickly. And if you're not like what you said, like what you're saying, like identifying or have spent time reflect, you know, finding what those, those thoughts are, we can react rather than respond. Mm. So that something you mean like, uh, respond rather than react, but yeah, no, yeah, you're completely right. Respond. Yeah. Yeah. React. So reacting like from a, from a, 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 a con an unconscious position rather than responding from a conscious position. Okay. Yeah. So, so like if you're, if you're in reactive mode, someone says, Oh, you know, oh, you know what you're talking about. And I'm like, my whole life, never no, told me I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm just useless, and I feel bad, and I'm like, and I'm just gonna like that's all going on in my head, and I'm like, you, you know, like, and when I react mm. from an unconscious mode, from a stress, from a memory, rather right. than go, okay, hang on, maybe this person's just actually unsure themselves. Definitely, yeah, I follow you now. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. that can happen, right? Mm -hmm yeah yeah taking taking that time to to um recalibrate and like have a, a calculated perspective on what's going on um and i mean uh that kind of comes down to like your breath as well like that's a, a big part of um what you learn in, in breathing meditations is like um taking like steps back and and kind of uh paying attention to the things that we don't pay attention to which like your breath you you take like what 30 breaths a minute or something like that i don't know what the numbers are but you take a ridiculous amount of breaths in your whole day like probably like a thousand or some shit and like how many of those do you actually remember or how many of those did you have intention behind or how many of those did you uh did you use with the intention to benefit yourself you know like um those are all things that um i think really play a big role in in, in understanding like how to actually you know benefit your your state of mind and, and the way that you are perceiving and making sure that you are responding rather than reacting that's a really beautiful way to think of it how many breaths are you consciously taking so okay oh yeah how did you say that how many breaths are you consciously taking yeah yeah like having so like i mean yeah your breath like like as we are speaking right now like as i'm pausing in my sentence and as i um, and naturally kind of flowing with the conversation. And as I speak, um, I'm not aware of the automatic system and the automatic um, underlying um, motions that my body undergoes while I conversate with you. Mm -hmm. So, but when you're paying attention to those things that we don't pay attention so much to, um, it really does kind of it, it, it expands you, but it also really constricts you at the same time. It broadens your perspective, but also like very like refines it at the same time. So how do you start, just so that people get some idea of like maybe if you've never done any kind of beginning to, to take stock of breathing and how to breathe to, you know, to start to open up airways to help the blood to absorb oxygen to, to help them slow down they're starting to get anxious how do you start that process for you and um and what do you do like what sort of like how many breathes in how many breathes out mm -hmm. how do you do that well i think um i mean there's probably so many different ways that you could go about meditation it's not funny mm -hmm. like there's I, I know that there's like the Wim Hof method there's like there's so many different breathing techniques that you can kind of touch base on um, I've tried Kundalini yoga. I've tried uh, like the Wim Hof method. Um, I, I mean, the main one that I practice is is just being a, attentive to my breath. And when I'm saying like it sounds so simple, and that's that's literally all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just pay attention to the one thing that is happening that I'm not really paying attention to if like in any other situation, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah. But, 
and, so and that's, you get it's always space. happening. What's that? You go into like a quiet space or do you like just find five or ten minutes or, or, or like is it a whole hour? How do you sort of set up your your space, your place to kind of start, you know, getting yeah. into concentrating on that? Um, well, um, I do like a couple of uh, different ways. Like I, I, I'm not sure what the terminology is, but I know that there was, there was one guy that I used to listen to and he said, going from your parasympathetic nervous system to your sympathetic nervous system and learning how to like master the transition in between those systems. I'm not sure if I'm wording this right, but basically what I, what I do is I work out, I like push myself as hard as I can. And then I sit down and then I try like put my attention back into my breath and I try calm like as you work out your heart rate starts to pump you start to sweat uh your breathing um you know starts to increase and and you start to have those like natural kind of motions those natural uh reactions to the physical demand that you're putting it through and then what you're doing when you're sitting down and breathing and trying to you're trying to calm all those emotions again because when you're exercising that's like a form of fight like you're you're yeah. training that fight hormone kind of thing and really then when you're breathing that. and you're trying to relax you're kind of almost taking control and taking charge of that those hormones and your fight or flight you know you're trying to um as you can see I, i've never spoken about this before but it's kind of making sense like if, now that i'm saying it like yeah, yeah when when i exercise i just breathe afterwards like i i do like a little five ten minute meditation session and that's me literally just crossing my legs putting my hands on my laps and then closing my eyes and then just you know concentrating. That, that's it that's it so yeah. um it, it doesn't have to get complicated it doesn't have to be like you have to do this particular breathing method and you'll feel this way <laughs> buy my fucking ebook for 4.99 you know like it doesn't have to be that way just you know you play with the tools that, that you have yeah <laughs> like like so like one of the because like Jordan is just saying like exercise and breathing are two of the main you know primary functions of um beginning to a get the body functioning and working properly and it's actually starting to start with start meditation so Generally, when we are like trying to relax the body, one of the things that I always find is really useful, I used to train a lot of the guys that when I was working with them, you know, in grief trauma and therapy and stuff is that, you know, it's about muscle contraction and then relax, relaxing the muscles. So if you start from your head and you work down into your, you know, your neck, you know, like, so, you know, like you can do stretches and stuff like that. It looks weird on camera. I'm not going to keep doing that. But yeah, <laughs> but you know, like you stretch and then you relax and you tense every muscle, every muscle contraction. And, and then in the relate, when you release the muscle, it allows the muscle to relax more. And then as we're doing that, um, and you do that all the way down. So you can do that sitting or you can do that lying down. And just it comes down to it. Like, I mean, you do that sitting, right? I don't know if you do muscle contraction work. But, um, um no I, i've never actually done that um that kind of uh method see see this is this is exactly what i mean there's there's so many different ways that you can go about it i think um like i've tried like a couple i mean the main one that i come to is just focusing on the breath um and then just making sure that i'm exercising but some people like that that might even be a little less like some people have quite over um overactive brains and they you know tend to kind of bounce from one thing to the other and they like that kind of yeah. uh intensity they like that rush um and they're used to it they've they've built and um kind of designed so to speak those grooves already in their behavior um so, so for some people just sitting down and breathing is actually not enough like they need to um they need to pay attention to more things kind of thing and this is like yoga is a fantastic way um that's like another form of meditation that you know requires a little bit more attention yeah and i mean and so when, what one one of the breathing techniques like actual timing wise that um, i often use and um uh, is like a is a four on the in and out on the uh, eight on the out it is yeah four on the in and oh, eight yeah. on the out. so if you're breathing in through your nose and then out through your mouth, it helps to um, it helps to oxygenate the blood, but it really slows down. So if you're going, you're going to count it out for me. Two, three, four. Okay, you count. You count. I'll breathe. Go. 
Wait, one, two. <laughs> okay, you, okay, you tell me where to go. Okay. It's four, it's four, four in. Eight, eight on the out. Okay, yeah. All right, three, two, one, and one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. That was a weird way to count backwards from eight. And, and one, three. and two, and three. <laughs> But yeah. So yeah, so I went four on the in and out on the eight, or eight on out on the eight, and then I hold my breath. So if you can hold your breath on the eight, what that also does is helps the blood to use the oxygen, right? I think I talked a little bit about the other day. So if you go do it with me, maybe if you guys want to have a practice with this, so you guys can do it one more time. Josh is going to count from like eight down. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just count me Let's in. see how we roll. Okay. Yeah. And one, two, three, four, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then I hold my breath for as long as possible. And then <clears throat> do it again. So if you do that, at least, and what I do find is that when I started doing it, I actually got really headachey, like I get kind of dizzy. Yeah, um, but what I found is that if more practice and repetition, I actually um, felt a lot more a lot more alive and oxygenated afterwards. So mm. you can do up to 10 to 20 breaths like that. Yeah. Just concentrating on that breath. So mm. that's a little technique, guys, if you want to utilize that, especially if you're finding yourself getting caught up in those thoughts and that anxiety and because it's, it's yeah. starting to kick in for people. I think people are like, Cool. you know starting to get a bit like that <laughs> yeah running around like headless chickens yeah um, yeah yeah i think yeah actually i do a um a similar breathing technique i i try inhale for as long as i can but as slow as possible and then i do the opposite so then try exhale for as long as i can and then try like get my breathing what's that you do it and we'll do it with you It'll take way too long. <laughs> it'll be like 20 seconds out, 20 seconds in, it'll just be mute. But like that, I mean, they'll, they'll get the idea. Like, yeah, you just, you try slow uh, your breathing, your inhalation and your exhalation down to as low as you can get it. Right. So it's breathing yeah. and go in through your mouth and then out through your nose as well? Um, yeah. And, uh, I go in through my nose and then out through my, no my That's nose. Really like for 20 seconds or as long as possible so yeah yeah all of these what, actually have scientific backing by the way we i mean like we don't just we're not just making up these techniques i mean they are most breathing techniques have scientific backing and research done to them so you kind of know yeah. that yeah. i'm not sure about my one i kind of just oh, played around with it oh, <laughs> i'm sure there's something right like in, but my but, one does right yeah <laughs> I think the but, science, yeah they yeah. pretty much they all target the same um, yeah. they all have the same kind of intention if you're like exactly. you know exactly. and they all they all kind of tap into the same grooves in your in your brain yeah. so i mean about the the one that i use um if anyone's interested the meditation app that i use is um waking up by sam harris it's fantastic it's really, it's a guided meditation and you do use it as well yeah oh nice yeah yeah um what day are you up to are you doing the daily um the daily course i'm gonna be honest I've been really bad. I haven't been using it. You gotta I've get started, back onto it. That's good, I'm, man. I started using it, and then I started doing this. I've got I'm actually doing an online breathing course. But oh, cool. sweet. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. it's, cool. it's so good. It's so good. Like, um, I mean, Sam Harris's voice is just so nice to listen to. But apart from that, he actually really does like touch base on some really because there's nothing worse than listening to like a yoga instructor or like a gym instructor who's just just got a weird personality or something like that you know like he's actually he's he's very well thought through you know he touched base on some really important points and um exactly. it kind of gets quite uh, quite philosophical at some points you know I, I think i've recognized the pattern i think i'm only on like day 20 day 21 or something so i'm still pretty early into it um but i've noticed that every three days he does like um like another like kind of 
philosophical point on the importance of breathing and meditation and stuff and he kind of touches base on it from many different angles and and you know backs it up with with certain things but he doesn't get too technical which i like like he just he keeps it very smooth he keeps it very um intuitive and and i really like the way that the whole course is laid out so and it's only like 10 12 minutes per session but it really does like i do it at the start of my day and i try to do it at the end of my day but, but usually it only works out to be at the start um but yeah that that's a really good um course if anyone yeah. wants to, to get access to that leader waves. waves is really cool so what's that the app's called waking up right yeah by sam harris yeah, by sam harris and i've got yeah. Upload on your phone. He's a, like right. a little bit of a shout out to like. I mean, he's he he will never know who I am. What am I talking about? <laughs> but well, like, hey, but he's got really good hey, content. He's got he's got yeah. fantastic content. He's got um, a couple of podcasts on with Joe Rogan, and there's another guy who used to be a TV news reporter, but I can't remember his name. Um, but yeah, there's like a couple of podcasts with Sam Harris and Joe Rogan, and they they're so so cool to to listen to. It really just kind of like you know how you have those intuitive that intuitive knowledge of like how to do something but then when someone says it in a particular fashion it just kind of clicks and it joins all the dots it's yeah. like revelations like you know like while you're doing like, this meditation it's it's super cool mm. yeah yeah you get it in your, in your soul you feel like like that right yeah so yeah exactly so what so, so what's the what i uh, just recapping for those who joined us guys so we're talking about stress. We were talking about how it sort of um, starts in the in the um, cortex, what it does in, the, in our brain memory, our brain memory, and our physical memory, and then how that, of course, um, then leads into how we react and respond versus responses, um, and that can affect, of course, our rest of our life. So we've just been talking about how some little breathing techniques, and um, Josh has just given us a really cool um, app to go to and some really neat um, things to listen to. Um, another thing that's really, really um, useful is um, visualization and imagery. Mm -hmm. So um, that is a very, very powerful. Um, okay, look, this one's got an idea here. He says, take a deep breath in your chest and take it out with your mouth. And on the sound. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, guys, check out what he's writing because it's good. It's good. Yeah. It's what did he say? Take it in with your chest. I can't read it while I'm talking. But, yeah. <laughs> Take I'll go back on the Facebook Live. I'll yeah, it's on the live. So, yes, have, have a read of it later. But yeah, so one of the other things here, guys, is also um, is, is imagery. And imagery is very, very powerful because what it does, we talked about thoughts before. So imagery is like when you're like taking yourself to, to a place where you feel safe, where you feel secure, where you feel um, uh, nurtured, where you feel loved. And, you know, and it might be with people, it might be by yourself, but when you call, you know, you, you, it's good to do it sort of at a place where if you can, where it's a bit quieter, um, where you close your eyes and you even, even imagine the smell. You know, what does it smell like? Are you with somebody? Was there perfume? Uh, is it a smell of a flower? Is there like home-based cooking? You know, what, what is the smell that around? Are you on the beach? Like if you're like right now, I can actually smell the sea. Like I can see myself on a beautiful beach. It's like kind of grainy white sand. I can see the, the crystal blue water and I can smell the salt water. Like I can literally experience that right now while I'm sitting here with you, you know? And that really makes me feel really good. Like I can see what I'm wearing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, it's it's a it's a like it's a really it's a great feeling. And so when you use imagery, it can really take you to a place of um, peace, you know, and it can really help de-stress. Mm -hmm. So imagery is really really cool. So maybe you know, something you guys could practice tonight as well is finding a way to you know before you go to bed is you know like go somewhere that's kind of a a, a beautiful place for you. So what you want to do mm -hmm. is what does it feel like? What does it smell like? What are all the different smells you can experience when you've got around you? Is it coconut mm. body rub? I love that coconut rub, you know, when you go and you're like, and then you smell like coconuts and you're just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that one? <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. I know that one. I lather myself in coconut oil every goddamn yeah. night. Exactly, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> no, I completely agree though. Yeah, like visualizing like a memory, um, like a significant yeah. experience or something that really, you know, and you, and if you're able to like, it might be something yeah. So how do you um, do your visualization? Because I know that you you do this quite a lot. Um, so how yeah. what was you, what would be like your process? How do you start it out, well, and um, like what's the intention behind it and stuff? Well, I guess first of all, I know for me that like the beach is one of my like special places. I'm really drawn to water. So I'm uh, in fact I was told you know by someone that I might die by water. I'm like okay. Hey, <laughs> so, <my> son. <laughs> Yeah, me that much. So now I'm really drawn to water. I've always been, I just love lying in water. I love the feel of it on my body. I love, you know, being in the sand. And, you know, so for me, just like, like, an, like when I need to peace and quiet, it's either the beach or it's like somewhere really green, like in a forest. But sometimes I get a bit cold in the forest. So right. I like the heat of my body. So right. I like to be on the beach, right? So this can see how how vivid my my imagination and my, my mm. feeling about it. So you know, like you know, like rubbing my toes in the sand and the feeling of that on my on my on my on my skin and the mm. smell of the coconut oil and like what it looks like as I you know walk into the water and the feel on my body, like it just feels so good, mm. and like it can take me away from pretty much whatever is going on. That's cool. Yeah. And do you do this like for a, like a time frame, or do you just like you know, like fuck it? I'm not even. I'm just gonna go in and just you know when I want to leave, I'm just gonna leave. And, yeah, you know. yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, he would say, "Oh, you're a dreamer," but I was I probably was. Yeah, it's a good thing, right? So I'm an entrepreneur. But it also became like a part of me that was just somewhere to go to, you know. Mm. And that's something now that can be really helpful for other people as well. You know, mm. so creating that place, it might not be your beach scene, it might be somewhere else. And to be honest, like, there's not a lot of people there with me. Like, it's not like a party scene. I think there might be one other person. But, you know, like, it's, it's um, yeah, it's pretty, re like, chilled out. Because I'm around a lot of people a lot. And so for me, getting, going there is kind of like time out. Mm. Away from people too. So it's a good way to to be with people but to to, to be by myself yeah so imagery cool. is really important. yeah so smell touch texture um taste you know like what like you can almost taste it you know what i mean like you can taste the salt on your tongue you know what i mean yeah. like you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah i know what you're saying yeah. I know what you're saying yeah yeah that's how that's how good you can get at imagery yeah or the pina colada or whatever it is you're drinking all right, so that is a really, really good way. He's disappeared off the screen. <laughs> I don't know where you've gone. But, um, yeah, so breathing, um, finding some sort of way to meditate, uh, muscle contracting and relaxing, um, and imagery is really, really important. Um, some of the really great ways to start dealing with some of those stresses that are coming up. Now, I don't know where Josh has disappeared to, but, anyway, while he comes back, must have been the salt. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about training your brain. And I think training your brain is super, super important. Um, so what is the time? I think we've got time. So um, training your brain, like what, what, we, what we've noticed is over time, I think he's lost um, connection actually. Okay, so over time, um, what, we, what happens to us is we've kind of disassociate ourselves with um, training our brain and our feelings and our emotions. So one of the things that is really important to do now is that when we're in a time of pressure or stress is to use this time to um, teach us how to be happy in good times. Yeah, hey, back. Okay, so you're back. I, um, my phone accidentally had a, a hissy fit. Sorry about that. <laughs> It's okay. So we're talking about um, training our brain. So I was saying that, you know, like in the bad times, this is the time when we've really got to teach our brain how to be happy. Um, and there are, um, and the, really the way of doing this is, is working out how to choose our own emotions and our own moods. Now, there are some schools of thought around emotion and emotion being that it's more of a stored feeling rather than a current uh, experience to a situation. Hey, Penny, how are you? Yeah, so anyway, um, so yeah, 
so so emotion being past and feelings being now so kind of a nice distinction to make as well um especially when you're under stress and pressure so now's the time for us to retrain our neurotransmitters okay and i'm going to talk about that so um okay so how this is it so neurotransmitters are basically small chemicals that are released in packages okay uh, and they travel between our brain cells um, activating little electrical currents and activity all right and they circulate through our body and they create our moods and our feelings and our emotions okay so there are four primary ones that we that we probably know of because these are the four primary studied ones there's quite a few others by the way but um, the four primary ones are dopamine okay we've got dopamine endorphin oxytocin and serotonin okay and they're the as i said the four primary um study ones so what we want to do is we want to learn how to utilize these neurotransmitters and these chemicals to actually become stronger as we move out of this um this time this time of sort of intense pressure because it's actually not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be a downer, a Debbie Downer here, but it's probably not gonna get easier after the lockdown. It's probably gonna be a little bit harder, especially in regards of um, the realities of life as the um, financial um, world starts to experience the impact of um, the COVID-19. So dopamine work, dopamine is like the first sort of stage of our of our neurotransmitter that we're trying to work on. I hope you can back here. I hope we get this phone sorted out. Okay, so dopamine works to provide drive and ambition. And so when we have good levels of dopamine in our body, we really want to take on new tasks. We want to, you know, like get out there and, um, you know, exercise and feel strong and like start maybe learning new languages. Uh, we want to start to develop new skills, right? So it gives us this this uh, endorphin, oh, sorry, this um, transmitter gives us drive and ambition. A lot of the time when people use um, substances, like so, especially such as like um, marijuana and alcohol, that can reduce dopamine drive. So you actually become less driven and less ambitious, often in goals. So <clears throat> that can be something that's really, really important if you're not feeling particularly driven and motivated maybe you're you're struggling with your dopamine levels um, because that that's like the rewards the rewards neurotransmitter so the way to really help increase your dopamine levels um, to support your motivation and your behavior um, towards positive rewards um, i'm going to give you some really good stats here eating protein protein is a really really important um, uh, food to help increase your dopamine levels Okay, and, and I like to obviously have a balance of vegetable protein and meat protein, uh, eating less saturated fats. So if you've been locked up and you're just chomping away on the fat, now is a, probably a good time to cut that down, all right? Um, consuming probiotics, they also help um, dopamine levels. Um, now, I don't know, I haven't seen this, but I just I read this part, eating velvet beans. So you know what velvet beans are, put up a photo of them, we'll go and find out, but apparently they're very, very good for helping dopamine levels. Exercise, um, and actually Josh talked about that before. I believe he's gonna jump back on here. So exercise is really, really cool um, for do, uh, increasing dopamine levels. And then when we talked before about how to use and practice your breathing, uh, it's also good to then learn how to control that uh, those endorphins and stuff that you're going to get, okay, so those um, the stress the stress that's created through uh, exercise. Really important is getting enough sleep. Now, I know that during this period, <clears throat> and I'm also you know, bad at this, but watching a lot of Netflix, yeah, and not getting enough sleep. Um, so everyone's like, I'm on a constant holiday, I'm just going to stay up late, right? So we <clears throat> tend to stay up a lot later, and then go to you know go so go to bed later and then get up later but what happens is we're not getting quality sleep so we're not getting enough sleep and that affects dopamine levels in our body which affects our drive our motivation and you know our reward center and if that happens consistently it also puts us at a um at a higher risk to increase stress all right um listening to really you know good music if you guys watch me on my fit camp you, you know I've got a really good music list. <laughs> Some of that Josh gave me too, by the way. So 
I thank him. But um, meditation also helps with dopamine levels. So um, some of that stuff that we talked about before around the breathing, around um, you know getting into a meditative state, that's really, really um, important for these neurotransmitters. Okay, um, getting sunlight and vitamins. So um, obviously, as you guys know, I'm a herbal life nutrition coach. Um, and so for me, this is really important because like my initial study and interest into herbal nutrition was through mood disorder and how to use you know, nutrition to support that, right? And so dopamine being a major driver of motivation and reward center, things like iron, niacin, folate, B6, um, all of that stuff, is really supports dopamine um, creation in our body or dopamine levels and that's in our shakes it's in our multi and you know when you combine them together it's really really beautiful and it's powerful and it gives you great levels of nutrients so you always wonder why herbie's jumping off the you know woohoo <laughs> we've got good dopamine levels we're well motivated <laughs> yeah so that's your first uh, neurotransmitter or hormone okay then we're going into endorphins so our endorphins um, provide pain relief they give us endurance to continue you know, like when you get that second win you know and you're like I can just keep going that's endorphin right um, obviously we have that when we're having babies we do that through exercise you're creating those good um, hormones and that that uh, that neurotransmitter then sends those chemicals through the body into the cells okay so that is really really important to uh, maintain our I guess our gas in a way, you know, to keep us going. So um, activities to increase your endorphins, again, exercise. So again, you know, if you're not sure and you want to talk to us about that, you know, uh, either Josh or me up. Um, eating chili peppers, okay? If you guys didn't know that, eating chili peppers, I did not know that. Chili peppers, and I'm going to say this, but eating chocolate apparently does help with endorphins. Now, that does not give license to go out and buy a big Cadbury dairy milk chocolate. No, it does not. But having a couple of pieces of, you know, chocolate, maybe with a chili, <laughs> is actually really good. And even like if you had a, like a, if you had a, one of our Formula One hot chocolates with a little bit of chili powder in it, A, you're getting all your nice and your folate, your B6s, yeah, um, and obviously, so you're helping dopamine levels and you're helping your endorphins because you're putting the chili in too and you're getting all the good stuff. Um, this is one of my favorites, clearly, drinking wine. <laughs> so apparently drinking wine doesn't help increase endorphins. Um, and that doesn't mean drink the whole bottle, okay? That, that's like, you know, being, being wise, but, um, you know, having a little glass, apparently. Having sex, I think everyone can agree, it definitely increases endorphins. Okay, getting a massage, you know, meditating again is actually on this list, and so is laughing. So, you know, <laughs> I like to do it. All of those things. All right. So increasing your endorphins, you know, getting your dopamine levels working, feeding through into your endorphins. Third um, here is our oxytocin. Okay. It's probably one that a lot, not a lot of people talk about, but oxytocin really um, happens a lot with, uh, it's called also known as the cuddle. What is it called? The cuddle, the cuddle hormone or the snuggle hormone. Yeah. So we get that when we're around people that we love or we're snuggling or we're touching. It's around human contact. And that actually is probably something that actually people might be really struggling with right now, um, especially if you are, you know, by yourself uh, in a contained space, you know, like you haven't got a lot of physical contact. That is something I struggle with. Like I'm a very contacting person. Like I love being around people, you know, like all my friends, like they'll be like, oh, I miss you. And I just want to hug them. And I'm a hugger. I'm a hugger, right? So I love touching. And when you touch, that helps to create oxytocin. And so often when you find people who are really touchy and huggy, they're generally really happy people um, because they have a, a good levels of oxytocin. So, um, you know, thinking about, you know, good relationships, thinking about family that you're with, you know, thinking about having hugs, that stuff's going to help you. Um, you know, apparently even playing with your dog. So if you don't have anybody with you, but you have a dog, like, you know, Josh's sister, who's got a 12-week 12 12-week puppy, 12-week-old puppy, like those things do increase those levels of oxytocin. Um, and that's a really important um, neurotransmitter and chemical, especially for like uh, mums with babies. So for women, 
we really need to have a lot of that initially in those first, um, you know, first, you know, when you have your baby, so that we can connect with the child. So really important um, hormone there. Now the last one um, that I'm going to talk about tonight is serotonin. And so serotonin provides pleasure and satisfaction for a job well done, basically. So it is a, um, it's serotonin is like it's like a well-being. It, it provides us happiness. It's a neurotransmitter. It's a chemical that makes us feel good. And so, um, and it, what happens is it translates that to the cells and gives us a message on how to feel, yeah, and how to feel the messages that we're telling ourselves, like, oh, I suddenly feel really good is often when you've got good serotonin levels, okay? If we're constantly feeling quite low and depressed, that could also indicate lower serotonin levels in your body, which means that you might want to be starting to look at how to increase that. So, and if you're using your, if we're training our body to, to use all these neurotransmitters and these chemicals, so dopamine, endorphin, oxytocin, and then our serotonin, we're actually teaching our body how to become happy. All right, so we've just given you the secret to happiness, <laughs> all right? So some of the things that can really help with serotonin um, uptake and um, production is eating uh, eggs, turkey, chicken, leafy green vegetables, seeds, nuts, um, getting uh, regular good, good sleep. Um, they also say, <laughs> say this again, but <laughs> they also say that sex is really important for serotonin. Um, levels and digestion, really good digestion. So if your gut's not working really well, then that can actually really affect your serotonin levels. So again, if you are like often feeling quite low in mood, um, that's something that you could easily start to rectify through nutrition um, and connection. Um, and niacin, which I talked a little bit about before, is really important um, for um, the production of serotonin. So in one of our products called Liftoff, we have thing, well, thing called niacin. This is a, a, a mineral. And that mineral, that nutri uh, sorry, that niacin, actually helps form serotonin through a thing called tryptophan. Okay? So, um, and if you are, again, as I said, low in niacin, that can affect production of serotonin, which can affect low mood, which can lead to depression. So I hope this has been really informative. I actually really enjoyed this my some of my knowledge to bring that to you today i'm sure it's a shame that josh dropped off he obviously had some phone issues there but um so um we've really gone through some good stuff that i think is going to help you guys move from you know this really compressed environment now um and hopefully some skills that will help us deal with the next upcoming few months where it is going to probably be a lot more difficult if we go back into normal life whatever that looks like um, especially when we've started, you know, some people, you know, we've started to go through transformations and looking at what our life is going to look like and, you know, where we want to be and we've started to, you know, go in and reflect. It can bring up a lot of stress and trauma. So um, using this time to develop those skills, to strengthen ourselves and um, become stronger for it as we move into the happy times. Um, I hope this has brought value and I'm really looking forward to going through and reading your comments and hearing from you guys and I just want to say thanks Josh for being on because it's awesome having you tonight and as I said we are putting out a new program New Thrive it's going to come out um, as I said I don't have a date for it yet but we're going to be doing lots of things like breathing and meditation and um, obviously nutrition meal plans and there's going to be fitness programs in there as well um, and it's uh, yeah you'll see more of that as it comes up but we're going to talk about um, a little bit more next week hopefully you'll hear from us again next week and I just want to say thank you so much for all of you joining today and I hope it's been enjoyable and you've got some good value from tonight all right take care and lots of love bye <laughs>